It's Brooks with Character Design Forge. Been a while, been a month since I was able to visit this, uh, or since I last worked on it, which you guys saw, you were there for it. Haven't touched it since. As a little bit of a refresher, even for myself, um, this is the Quetzalcoatl sort of space pirate character who's out to seize a moon. And the last thing that we did was uh, build sort of this this head and tail. Actually, the one thing I touched just now was I had a series of sort of, I can actually show you, um, a series of like masks, um, layer masks, and each of these things was sort of separate. And, uh, you know, uh, let's see. I don't really mind, really, so I'm just gonna kind of merge all of these layers together so that they're all one. And I'm going to hide that there too. So at this point, really, we're just looking to, you know, maybe I'll, I'll go up with another layer that will eventually merge down. It's just sort of making sure we don't have to worry so much about things like uh, overlapping with our layers. Here's our new one. So now we can go in and sketch. So, yeah, I don't know so much what, what kind of costuming this character is going to have. Uh, I don't know if we should go sort of Darth Maul uh, cyborg, right? Um, let's see. I do like the way that this arm kind of looks right here. I would just be wary of sort of what we do with it. I think I think if we do a little shoulder pad here. and kind of have a little sp spiral cut into it, which we can mark like that. Not bad. And then, uh, let's see. That curve properly. Sidewall. So yeah, that's our, that's our little shoulder. Let's do that with it. And then from there, I, I don't know. Let's see. That's a good place for that. So we've got his arm in a sling down here. Let's try and... Um, actually, I think these arms are pretty good how they are. I just... Yeah, if we give him kind of a tank top look, that might be sufficient. Tank top it up. So we'll get sort of this whole shape that I'm building here will be uh, cloth, right? The cloth of the tank. So let's see, let's do this. That'll all be skin underneath. And then we'll do a second layer of cloth that's probably a different color that sort of crosses over here, over top. We'll put, let's see, how do we sling properly? Let's give a little bit of this kind of curve to what's there already. And it works if sort of the, the arm is pressed in there. We just want to make sure that maybe we have a little bit of curving right here, just to make it clear that the arm is kind of tucked in and it's not, we're not just intersecting two flat shapes together. So hopefully we can kind of nail that. The bottom arm can be smaller. Uh, maybe from a, just a natural standpoint, but also, you know, less, because it's injured, it's maybe less muscle mass. So slightly smaller. Like that. Um, the interesting thing that I'm kind of th thinking about a lot about character design recently, but especially revis revisiting this guy, is that the job of a character designer a lot of times is to sort of go in and, and simplify and boil down to the easiest shapes. And I say job as in like in a production standpoint, right? You you start with a maybe more complicated animated pilot, um, but then the network, the studio... Uh, kind of because of budget restrictions goes, okay, well, we can't 
maintain this same level of detail, right? And so a character designer goes in and says, what's the minimum viable version of this character that's easy to animate, easy to turn around, easy to, you know, pose and give expression and everything, uh, where they're still unique and, and marketable, right? They're, they're a new thing, but they're also simple. And so that's the, that's kind of the main balance that you're trying to strike. Um, and with this guy here, I, I just, you know, I think there's a simpler version of him. We, we just have created such a complicated guy. And let's see. So this arm here, yeah, I'm pretty happy with what's there already. I, I don't want to belabor this just for the sake of redrawing. Um, I like that arm there. And yeah, we'll, we'll make sure that this all kind of wraps properly. Um, we'll have the sling kind of go under here, wraps around, and then we'll give the tank top a, a place to kind of, come on, come on, there you go. We'll give it some drapery. So it's going to kind of end up wrinkling at the bottom here. Okay, and then, yeah, we can do, this line can follow through. That looks about, about right. Let's flip it. Take a drink of water. I am worried about that sort of two flat shapes intersecting idea and I'll kind of bulge this a little. Hopefully that saves it. Hopefully it's enough. I think because it, yeah, it has to keep sort of rippling through the next few layers here. So let's do that. Sort of massage those lines. That looks better. <laughs> this section got a little complicated. Okay, yeah, it's better. Better, is it perfect? I don't know. Flip it back. Let's see, it's a lot of lines now. Um, and that's definitely one of those things where, you know, from a minimum viable character standpoint, that's too many lines. You wouldn't go that deep unless it was for kind of a standalone shot, right? Okay. So now we kind of get the fun part. So we kind of have oversized, bulky Aztec square shape language here. We've got kind of the um, the natural state of him here. And let's, uh, let's come in and sort of finish out this claw. I think I want to do... Um, where the fingers themselves are a little bit pointy, but the real point of it is coming from some long fingernails. Let's give that a shot. Real, that's just, that makes this guy even slime here. You know, he doesn't just have pointy claws, he's got overgrown fingernails. What is, what is skis? <laughs> Long fingernails on their own isn't a bad thing. Just as part of this collection of sleazy characteristics, it works. Okay, uh, let me fix this finger. Not bad. That's one of those things too. I think that it's valuable for a character designer to sort of Definitely know the the right pieces of a hand and everything, but when push comes to shove, know how to create very simplified versions of hands like like these. These are not very realistic at all, but they work. Okay, cool. I 
think honestly this could go more like this. Might mean bringing the thumb up. Let's drag it. I just wanted kind of a sharper bend right there. Hopefully that works. Uh, feels like I kind of sabotaged the whole thumb there. Let's go back to where we were. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay. Let's... Now we get kind of the fun aspect of we get to build the... Let's see, we actually don't need this line. Get to build this outer arm. And let's see, let's, uh, we've got enough. I just want to make sure I don't have too much here. That's where the original is. Okay. Let's build it on this same layer. Let's. So now I really want to sell the idea of these segments. And maybe I'll do this. I won't go crazy on, on how different each one is, but I'll kind of demarcate with little indents there. And let's see, should these be on the side? Those little pegs? Uh, I think it'd be cool if they, because we're only looking at this guy from one angle, let's, let's do them so they're they're part of this plane here, and then we'll have them kind of taper down. I think that's cool. So now each of these pieces, I, I think it's kind of important to kind of note at this point that each one of these segments is like sort of handcrafted, right? It's it's not it's not the kind of thing where just an assembly line, you know, produced boom, 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 boom. Uh, hopefully this won't tangent with what's already here, because we can definitely move our our notch. Let's see. I'm worried about that. Um, and the other two that we just did are closer, farther down the sec the section, the segment. Anyway, so we'll do this. A little, a little further up. Okay, not bad. And uh, we'll add a little bit of a line here. You can kind of do this to show that it's not that important that they're separated. Add like a little gap in the line. Instead of, you can, it's very easy to start just going like, okay, these connect here and everything. But if you're looking more vaguely, you can just sort of show, oh, okay. They separate there, but we're not too worried about it. Okay, and then let's see. I'd love to see like this kind of shape inside the bottom one. And we'll do the same kind of tank tread square stuff to this one. Okay, this will come down. So we're continuing the pattern even though it's smaller for a section. Okay, and this here can come down. It's always fun. I really like the real-time design videos. They're a little bit more, um, it's a little bit of a different workflow for me, only from the standpoint of I'm I'm explaining everything as I do it, and so there's sort of a lot of differences in, like, maybe my thinking process, how fast I'm able to do this. It's all very formal, but I really enjoy doing this. I, I just don't get enough time 
during the week to create things. Uh, recently, I've been very, uh, very involved. Every kind of free moment I can get, I've been working on this comic project that will be done soon. And so it's kind of like in the office when when uh, Dwight talks about Mega Desk, he's like, everything, he'll do anything for more Mega Desk. That's kind of where I'm at with uh, comic work. All the only thing right now is getting more comic time, which is not easy, but doing it, making it work, getting getting a creative project done with sort of the, all the real life adult responsibilities and trials and hard times we've been through this last year has been, uh, I don't know, it's just like, it's a, it's a triumphant feeling to know that it's almost actually done, that I was able to put my mind to this thing, even when it was difficult, along with everything else going on, I actually accomplished it, but I'm not there yet, so. <laughs> I won't celebrate too fast. Okay. And let's see, let's indent here, here, and here. So how would this work? Eh, we'll do that. That works enough. And really I've, yeah, I've just kind of used what was already underneath there, even though that was a pretty I know that I meant it as sort of a guideline, but I just, I don't know, I'm, I'm really feeling simple shapes recently. I'm thinking about, well, like comic work, you know, one little detail is the same detail that you're going to have to draw maybe a hundred times in one issue of a comic or something, right? Like the, every time you add something, you're multiplying your work by so much. So I don't know, I'm really feeling the idea of uh, simple simple segments for this. And you don't want to distract, like we've already decided a lot of other details about our characters, um, like their head and everything else. And that because we're doing such crazy different shape language things, like each piece is supposed to feel like it, you know, comes from a different thing. Um, it's important not to overwhelm with detail in just one spot, you know? Okay, now this is the point where maybe there's, there's something else to add. So what can we do? Let's um let's maybe add some paneling. Let's see how we can do this. To sort of suggest a palm like this. And what's this look like? Kind of winging this. Well, let's get rid of that step. Uh, let's see, this can go here. That works. Mm. That's weird. Um, Let's see, what if this did that? Yeah, no, well, it's mainly this here. Make that concave. Kind of note more of a hand. And yeah. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. This is very improvised, these shapes, which is why there's so many of them. Why they don't go together well. Uh, let's see. Well, let's just make it as though that's one kind of cutaway area and the rest of these shapes go together. How about that? That'll be my compensation there. My compromise. Cool. 
It's interesting. I, I feel like, I don't know. I, uh, I won't doubt the process of how I got here. I just know that a month ago, things were so crazy that I think my process was rusty or sort of my decision making was delayed, if that makes sense. But here I am using my old guides and everything, so I'm not, not disparaging myself, but thank you for sticking around if you've kind of been watching all three parts. And I know this has already been faster than the first real-time character I did, the Goodwin Beggar Bard, Vagabond Bard. Okay, we added, hmm, should we have done that? Should there be segments to each? Of course. Of course there should. Of course there should. Let's add this. Yeah, I'm really feeling it this time around, guys. Uh, definitely the final part of this series. We'll finish it up right now. Uh, or, or, you know, in this sitting. Cool. I like the kind of angle this was already there at. So how about we try and match the other one as much as possible. And do this. Uh, that work? I don't want to get rid of this detail that's underneath too much. But if it's not a problem, I'll proceed. Let me give this a flip, especially square things like this are sort of insidious for uh, not really, you know, because it looks semi-simple, right? You're kind of lulled into thinking that it looks correct and symmetrical and everything, uh, but because it's also, with square things like this, it's also important to be uniform and everything. Yeah, okay, it looks good. Um, this claw is smaller than the other one. Let's uh, actually size this one down instead of making that one bigger because I feel like a lot of the info about the hand behind it is important on our inner finger, inner claw, and it'd be kind of a shame to get rid of it. Unless it was kind of you know, out there, which I don't particularly like. Okay, actually let me flex this one in a little. Rotate. We'll do kind of this. We'll do kind of this. Yep. It's it's done. Um, and we'll bring this panel in. And this one too. Is it weird? Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> okay. There we go. That same flex out that this little line makes is good. Let's bridge that part and finish out this piece. So now the claw is, uh, the, the thumb is a very different structure. So that's cool. I'm all right with that. Cool, so let's crank this back up. Let's turn that off and turn this back in. 
well, I still have to work on the actual head tail, but that's an upper body. That's, that's in the important pieces. If I was to change anything, I think this thumb could kind of come in a little just to make it clear that let's see here just make it clear that it is sort of uh, the minor you know that it's interior not saying you can't have uh, like a, a claw that goes outside right but generally you want it to kind of go interior so just based on that sort of rotation yeah that's it's better okay these be better kind of out here nah <laughs> we're classic overthinking again okay so i'm really looking forward to the color that we make with this and uh we do need to kind of come up here you know the the arm that I just did here is, is perfectly fine for inking. I can't say the same about the rest of the head, which is unfortunate. Because that kind of means we'll have to ink everything, right? Okay. We can at least duplicate what we have. So now that is new layer with the body. Let's go back to this one. Let's use this one. We're not too worried about keeping everything separate. We're just, you know, what what goes on top of what. Uh, we're just going to use our main head layer and head tail layer for the legs just so that we can do this and not worry about affecting the, the body, the torso that we already drew. So I like this. Let's see. We don't have any should we go like round and triangle with these two? That might be the best way to go. So I'm going to go, let's see, round. Yeah, these colors are going to be awesome. Or interesting, at least. When I say awesome, I mean I'm, I'm excited about the opportunity. I'm not saying that <laughs> my, my skills will pay the bills necessarily. Yeah, nice kneecap, rounded kneecap, maybe a sort of disc edge like this, right? Great. Cut in here. I like it all. That's great. Okay. And this edge here. Too much work. Too much time spent on that one. Um, let's go. So I'd love it if, if we kind of... This femur area is just kind of... Big swooping shape. Kind of not unlike what we have underneath here. Um, as we get to the knee, let's do this. Where it's sort of projecting off of the surface. And let's give it a... I love when you can kind of get inconsequential little greeble details in here. Um, as for the stuff I've been talking about, of keeping things as, as simple as possible, it's not, you know, always a good idea. Um, so then we'll make this kind of cut is that I don't think that's a good perspective yeah. We're looking at the back face of this now I think this is all good except for this part here Actually, let's do it in two layers like that. Let's give this a termination there. Let's make this an actual 
round bit. You can do this underneath, that's cool. Oops. Yeah. And then let's, uh, with our under part here, we can do piecemeal, piecemeal. This is kind of, again, improvisational. Um, I should be starting with a larger shape and working down. Let's go, yeah, let's do that. Let's make our second piece here. It kind of wraps around that peg. Run it all the way up and then we can cut from here. So we make a good solid straight line like that. And then we come in and cut here and here. Actually, you know what? Let's make it there. I like a little uh, proportion change so it's not just equal pieces. Okay. And let's see, can we do that? Hmm. Oh, I don't like how, let's see, this needs to come up. Otherwise it looks like it's too flat. Massage, massage, massage. <laughs> What's the Mona Lisa line from Parks and Rec? I hear what you're saying and I don't like it. I see what I'm doing and I don't like it. Yeah, I don't know how to finish this bottom piece because I'm doing it so backwards. I think, yeah, everything's backwards really. Um, let's tell this to kind of have a, so that we're kind of looking inside this is a new plane that's kind of an, an angled plane. It's not a 90 degree. It's just a new plane for the leg. Let's give it a, let's see. Can we do like a, let's, uh, we, we wanna meet, right? Like we've got a round and then a square, or a, a round and then a triangle. Round leg, triangle leg. So let's see. Let's give this put this knee here, maybe. So what's kind of the culmination of those two? Do kind of just a cylinder? Like this? that then kind of comes to a teardrop in the back, although we can't see the back, so a lot of good that does. Um, yeah, that's good. That's pretty basic. Like that's not breaking any new ground here. But I like this kind of Yeah. Nope, no extra circle. In fact, keep this shape overall, but we want to do another big, little, big. Keep those little indents. Uh, except that's not the right angle, huh? Trial and error. I think because we, we wouldn't be looking at it from that angle. Be more like this. This is probably the point where I'm, I just sound like I'm saying total nonsense. Uh, let's see. Okay, good. I think it's too high. Yeah, it's too high. That's, that's part of it. 
let's just quickly come down in here. Nice. All right, now, now oh, we do need to finish the bottom. Let's finish the whole leg. So we'll we'll make it almost like a antithesis of the top there, where this is definitely wrapping underneath. Same here, and same here. Cut to make that all streamlined again. Yep, get rid of that stuff I just did there. Um, let's, yeah, make it so you can see underneath. Just turning flat panels into cylinders at this point. Okay. Scuff up those knees. Shouldn't be perfect. And then let's do what we can over here. So I kind of want to look at that old Ian McHugh reference over here for a sec. Because, yeah, he's got a great like version of that sort of asymmetricality. Those are cool. A lot of kind of bands and wrapping and stuff, right? Um, let's see. So... If we keep this a triangle at the knee, um, what if this was, let's kill the audio on my phone. We want to kind of get the same, let's see, if we did that, that's two, two square. That is obviously different than that, right? Just gonna make sure that this kind of terminates underneath. Although we can. Hmm. Let's do that. Come in under. Again, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm building so backwards. So if things are coming out okay, it's by accident. I don't like that one triangle. Let's, uh, let's keep this all together. Um, yeah, it's not crazy triangular, but... notch there. Oof, I don't know what that's supposed to be. There we go. Oh, that's perfect. It's almost like a... Let's see. Yeah. So, let's, I want this to kind of come in there and here. And that's behind it. It's all going together. Um, it's just that here we need maybe that to stop early. Because otherwise you kind of have a tangent. And maybe that can glow. That's sort of a little area that can glow. And we'll stop it there. Cool. I think with color... Those will really look separate. 
Um, and from here, we kind of add onto our main greebling to go down. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised actually how much is really fine from the original. That's just all detail, right? You kind of start with the more vague shapes and you're just refining and defining at the end. And, yep. Cylinder on this side. Kind of a, you know, we'll do like a hammer shape. Ooh, sloppy cylinder. Oh boy. Um, let's go in. All this really is, is you're just, you're kind of combining the very simple mechanical constructed shapes with uh, organic human anatomy or just or organic shapes, right? The, the things that are familiar. From a, a kind of a biological standpoint, right? So if, if you're familiar with it on a, a human or a dog or even a, you know, some, some kind of plant life. Let's flip this because I don't, I don't like what I just did. Yeah, bad angling, but we're close. Kind of terminate there and then come up. Cut there and here. We'll fill out. Pretty easy. Kind of, kind of cheated. It feels, it feels like cheating to me, but it's probably okay. Um, do I need kind of a, just the way that sort of muscles work, you know, like you've got, that with muscles where this side is pulling that way and this side's pulling that way, or, you know, those two opposite directions. Um, let's see. So do I, you know, I, I've kind of got this peg in here that works as a foot. Um, oh, you know what? Does it ruin it? Does it ruin the kind of... If I do a second, yeah, I'll just do this. This, it doesn't ruin it. To do kind of a, sort of a prosthetic spring leg back here. Uh, except I need it to kind of originate from this main portion of the foot. Yeah, didn't we talk about, I think in the original, or the first part of this video, didn't we talk about him being like a double peg leg? Sorry, something on my desk over here keeps making noise every time I kind of move the table a little bit, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Try and work out, there we go. <laughs> Different noise, but it's gone. Okay, uh, and I'm gonna add to these two pieces, just making sure they're, yeah. Not bad. Uh, I think if if I connect them, bridge them in the middle. Like that. And then I'll add those those teeth. Make sure those are at the right angle. Yeah, that's good. There we 
go. Better. Do one small one there. The bottom. Okay. Here we go, guys. Not bad, almost there. So let's see, for our triangular foot, um, we can kind of do the same, but let's, hmm, let's do this. Kind of do a triangular socket. Kind of a little guard. And let's see. We still need to kind of go back and down. So that same kind of chassis underneath is going to be there from the other leg. But let's go... Sorry if I'm not talking enough. There we go. Does that make sense where this is? I guess I'll need to make it kind of clear. So this comes down that same peg from the other side and we'll add maybe the same kind of wrapping it has. I hope this is symmetrical. I haven't. I've been so focused on details for a minute or two now. This might be completely off. Yeah, it's 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 pointing too far out. So how do we resolve that? Well, this face needs to be minor versus the one that's out here. So we'll bring this up. Cut this one down, cut into the point. And let's straight up take everything. Uh, not there, but everything here. We'll rotate, straight up flat rotate to about here. Come in with these two. Oof, that's oh, that's bad. Uh, let's come back up so that they're level like that. And finally, straighten this this one out. Let's redraw it. It's easier that way. Yep, there we go. They're successfully rotated, maybe. Oof. Everything is way too blobby. Okay. That's as much as I'm gonna do, and I think, uh, Anything left over will be okay. Let's make sure this guy comes down the equal amount. We'll do sort of a same uh, glow indent piece here. Like this is almost like a little glowing headlight kind of thing. Uh, let's make sure it looks right.
Okay, even if it isn't perfect, it's too much time. Okay, and now we drop our foot down. Let's see. Gonna make sure I know specifically where this links up, otherwise, you know, if I don't know something, then the audience definitely isn't. If I don't know how make something makes sense, even if it's not visible, it's not gonna make much sense to someone who really looks at it scrutinously. Okay, let's give uh there we go. Sort of a larger peg that's connecting to larger cylinder right and do we go foot on this one no I like the the double point oh, that's so much detail I don't think it's a good thing hmm I'm looking at zoomed out and it's so like Ugh. I don't... I see what I'm drawing and I don't like it. Well... Finish not perfect, right? Okay, let's go... In here and finish this up. That's cool. And we have our cloth kind of hanging down into this. Nope, we can't erase that because it's on the other layer. Okay. Hopefully that all, well, we still have this bit here that needs to kind of connect. He's got tiny legs. Tiny leg guy. <laughs> I don't know how he supports all that weight. Not our problem though. Let's flip him back. Okay, so the only thing I just did was I kind of cleaned up my layer work here. Uh, we've got everything ink on one layer. We've got a new layer for the flats. Uh, I do want to come in here and maybe darken these lines up just a little bit. We'll keep it brown. Uh, let's see, let me use a ink brush that's kind of at the same, same uh, brush shape size as what we used for the lines. And I'm just gonna go around the outline here. And I'll hand do this. I, I tend to hand do my, my flats just because I, if something goes wrong, it's my fault, right? Uh, if I try any kind of automated fill, uh, sometimes there's sort of issues with the pixels kind of going all the way to the edge, especially if I'm using a very brushy, you know, it's one thing if I really had clean ink lines, um, but because I used such a brushy sort of pencil as my final ink, uh, there's no way that there wouldn't be like kind of artifacting and, and pixelation and little white pieces kind of sticking through. So especially with something that's kind of complicated like this around the border. 
we'll we'll hide it. We'll we'll give it a you know triple check. I'm not saying that it's going to be perfect, but like I said, it's if something goes wrong, it's my fault. So there's an accountability to doing this manually. Uh, I'll still be able to fill in from here in the center. So all I'm really worried about is the edges. And using this brush, uh, there won't be any kind of escaping unless I really did deliberately leave a hole. Okay. Almost there on this arm. I can't wait to do sort of the, so we're color palette wise, we're gonna look for some reds, oranges, greens, maybe a little bit of yellow. Um, and that same kind of Voltron-esque idea of each piece being kind of a different color, uh, but also maybe different materials, right? So we already kind of made that indent for the leg on uh, his right leg, right? Uh, things like that. We'll make this other leg sort of more rusted, uh, you know, rusted versus, fut versus futuristic, banged up versus new. Kind of one leg is the Wally and one leg is the Eve. If that makes sense. I think that's good, as long as I have that one little gap. I know this doesn't make a ton of sense. Like what what goes where. But at least for the flats, I think this one little negative area right in there. Oh, you can't see my pencil anymore. <laughs> I was circling that little white spot left behind the kneecap. Okay, filled in that entire leg, didn't need to. All I need is the, the outline, the outer border. If the iPad recording fails at any point, apologies. At least when it crashes, it saves what it's done so far. I just might not notice that it's crashed. So there might be a little gap. Almost there. We've got this negative space here to take care of inside the head tail and arms area and yeah I'm, I'm doing all of my colors on one layer at least for now i, I think it's easy to do on uh, with inks because there's it's kind of obvious the dividing line between color shape sections there's a black line there um depending on the complexity of things i will with lineless stuff do multiple layers and it's mainly just to keep make sure you're not cutting or erasing the wrong thing. Overlapping where you shouldn't. I'm gonna color in the hand all the way just cause. I know this isn't very interesting. I think in the last video I just straight up sped up, sped through the, the last uh, real time character. I just sped through this, area, this section cause there's Really nothing of, nothing special happening here. Okay, just making sure my lines are clean. I think that's good. So now I can fill in. Aha! So, where's my hole? Let's check. So, oops, that's the one area that I didn't want filled in. Let's leave those. Uh, there's gotta be a section around here that I'm missing. Oh, there it is, right there. Perfect. Okay. So now is the fun part. Now we get to, let's kind of adjust this a little bit. Let's make sort of a base color for him. Um, let's find sort of a red, a rusty red that we like. Maybe, maybe one like this. And then a, a more maroon one. Those two look good together. And then uh, 
dingy sort of yellow. Let's grab the orange we already have. Nope, get rid of it. And then green, emerald green. Like that. Let's see. Bring back the orange that we have already. Uh, this is close as a palette. Let's go like this instead. And this one. Yeah, okay. So let's go with this one first as a base. You too. Okay. I want to go ahead and add some of this palette. I don't think that this, like this palette overall is good for like one element, right? The sort of the mind, like, let's, let's go ahead and lock this layer. Um, I think we do need like a little bit more variation to get the full Voltron effect, right? Because I think at the moment it just looks like, oh yeah, that's a cohesive color palette. And it's almost like we're trying to get a non-cohesive one, right? So we'll make this helmet red. And hopefully like, let's see. Hopefully I can use these same colors over and over without any of them touching, if that makes sense. So if I do this red here, and it will always go back in and shade and stuff too, so that's not a big worry. So if I make the interior here also red, we'll, we'll make sure to shade it so that it's darker. Okay. Um, so maybe if we use the green for his head, his skin color. Uh, should the teeth, yeah, the sh teeth should be different. We'll actually keep them that, that pale yellow. Um, let's see. Oh, the saturation of this is too deep. I think we need to, yeah, the saturation and like the the difference in value or in in hue rather. Well, value too. We just need to go straight black on the inks for the moment. There we go. Better. And we can always go back and color it. Let's make this one red underneath. Keep going. Inside of the mouth is gonna be different. Do we have an existing? I think we need to go kind of a, a very fluorescent color for the eye that we haven't used yet. That looks cool. I almost feel like we should see a, a tiny sliver of the, the eye on the other side. Worry about that later. Let's come in with this, make that his inner mouth. No, no, we're not gonna do that. Uh, let's go, let's use this tooth color again. And let's see, can we go less kind of desaturated and darker or something like that and go in here? I'm selecting outside the teeth because I was silly and added the tooth color first. Is this too light? It might be too light, but I kind of like it. Let's see. So now let's go in with our, let's make our 
feathers yellow, maybe? And we'll just not worry about that yet. Do a fill in. Let's see. Were any of our. Yeah, we have kind of. Uh... Yeah, we do. We have two distinct patterns. They're kind of ear shapes. Let's find those again. Right? Yep. I don't know what's going on with that one long one. It's been a month. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's uh, go in with the skin color. This might be too dark of a green. And we'll put it on top of here. Yeah, it's too dark of a green. Okay. Sorry, it's not as exciting as sort of the initial blockout stage. But it's necessary. Uh, here's a few places that I just need to beef up the border. Okay. Let's see if I was to maybe go there, not with all the colors, but just the, the green. Can we select it? That looks better. So that's our new green. Okay, let's lock it again. Um, let's see, which of these aren't we using yet? Well, we could keep this yellow neutral color in here. I know we just colored over it, but we'll trace these feathers back out. And then go for Maybe a section of this that is the, what's the third color one? Oh, green, yeah. Yeah, that's all the colors. So let's go, let's try maybe this one. It's contrasting. Still a lot of let, uh, lettering, a lot of rendering left to do. So I'm not too worried about like, you know, final, final looks. And let's relock and come in here. And we'll keep the feather color consistent with that bright orange. Come in with that here. Okay. So that's pretty much everything Aztec, right? Let's uh, keep this red for the shoulder plate. Uh, we still have the arm. Hmm. 
let's see. Let's go with a sort of tan or a beige, right? For the tank top. And then the sling will make another color. This is the balance of these colors is such a, like you don't want to overload or go too like just indiscriminately multicolored, right? Um, but then at the same time, just having this one sort of element, this one main element of him, the Aztec stuff being like very multicolored and on its own is a little tough. So maybe let's go maybe a bluish gray for the sling. Nope. There we go. Uh, I think a brown is better. So let's go back to what we had and then just go more brown. Red shift. Perfect. Yeah, I don't want to change up too fast. So like we, we are sticking to a certain kind of autumn scheme with everything that's already been colored. And that'll at least be helpful when we get to the others. I think um, keeping like maybe one of our other limbs blue or leaving blue for, as the accent, um, like right here. Right? That's kind of a better way to show the contrast there. Our arm, let's see. What well, looks good for our arm? Let's go, I wanna try kind of an orangey yellow here. Like a goldenrod, really. And I should have some spots that are kind of gray or more neutral. I'm gonna be careful about that. Okay. I'll go in there and fiddle with those details in a minute. Let's go super desaturated on the pelvis. There we go. Cool. That way there's, as each limb has just such a disparate set of colors and everything, we at least have some rest in the middle. Okay, and what's left like hues wise? Maybe Mmm, do we go for my favorite? Do we dare? Probably don't dare. <laughs> I don't like this. Um, but it's close. Like, what if we went kind of more deep like that? And this is the beat up leg. So what if it was sort of orange or brown? Like, is that too similar to other aspects? Like how much is too much? Hmm. Let's, uh, Oops. Let's freehand this. Arm out. Oops. Cool. This has been a lot of fun. We are almost there. And let's see.
See, there is sort of like a, a very restrained. <sighs> hmm. I mean, what if we do just like, if we do the Voltron like straight up, like this would be red, right? So the other arm is green. It's just that we've already got that range of color. Hmm. It's not too exciting. That leg is exciting. <laughs> Leg is demanding attention. Well, I think accents are gonna make this thing. Uh, let's change this. I think if this goes a little marooner, let's see. More like there. And then we can kind of, uh, let's see that. There, okay. Now we come in and sort of add on to this. Still a little remnant of purple in there. Um, this bit here, we'll do all the metal. I'll just color for a second. Just to kind of diversify, see what what's actually a poor color and what's more like. Just the lack of diversity is killing it. Uh, let's go gold. Let's go actual gold for this. Oh, and that's going to be blue. This little piece down here. Let's go glowing blue. Like the others. And, yep, from here we can go in. Let's see. And add another hue, like another shade, rather, to something like this. And here, just vary it up. Kind of that same idea of working from vague shapes to specific detailed ones you're kind of doing the same with color just going starting broad and adding kind of some layers and depth to it let's go lighter in the middle that's not crazy symmetrical but we won't worry um that's cool and a lot of this like lighting will help some of this yeah but i like the accent work so far Let's go up to here for this like sort of finger plating. We'll make it darker. Hmm. We'll go darker on the inside, in the interior. Here, no, what's this color? There we go. Perfect. Like we could have almost, uh, if we weren't worried about making it so uneven and mismatched, we could have kind of gone in and done like a value version of this, right? Uh, where everything was sort of monochrome and we we're just focused on the values, light, light and dark. Let's see this here, little interior spot. Okay, and so should I do each, let's see, maybe each face that's kind of going up like this. Let 
make these all lighter. Have to fix that in a second. Because I'm kind of expediting this for your guys' sake, there's going to be a lot of like messy stuff if we turn off the line layer. Usually a little cleaner with this stuff. Cool. That spot here. Need to fix. And what, if, yeah, what if I went every other? And kind of did a little bit of a color change. Is that, I think that defeats the purpose of what we kind of had done before. If we went light green, I think that's cool. I don't know. I'm so conflicted on that. I... You know what? Because everything is such a crazy mismatch of colors already, I think having each element besides this, the blue one... Mm, yeah, we'll keep it. We'll keep it kind of gray. Keep it in the background. It's good. It fades in a bit. We'll do this, and let's go in and select our flats. Actually, let's, uh, yeah, select them. New layer, we'll go in with a bit of a blue. Let's grab uh, this shader pastel. And kind of, we'll just add what we would like for shadow. Keeping in mind sort of the planar nature of a lot of these surfaces. Um, but we're also doing a little bit of fall off from there. So areas like around that corner, you can go do some extra stuff. A little bit inside here for sure. So I know this looks like shadow right now. Or um, sorry, I know this looks like I'm adding light, but it's gonna be just a little tinge of shadow actually once we turn it into a multiply layer let's do the same over here a couple areas that aren't that arm that I didn't do the kind of change in light when the surface changes thing yet so let's see up here maybe might have to go more extensive on this head Let's this at least can all kind of get filled in. Yep. Good. Then a little bit of this stuff. Super light. Cut in here. And one more thing I want to do in addition to like all the rendering is go back to our line layer and ease up a little on how, how dark and black it is. Make our eraser the same brush texture. Get in there. Cut into some of that. Okay. This cast shadow here. Boom, this plane, 
the pelvis. And then here. Get everything away. We're imagining that the light's coming from, you know, this angle basically. Okay. Not much to it. Okay, we'll see what this looks like and adjust accordingly. So I'll go in normal layer, we'll change it to multiply, see, like that. Um, drag down the opacity. The blue is not a good, like, it's not copacetic. So let's make it a little redder. You can actually bring the opacity up there. And right about there. <laughs> that was the original, there. It's not too bad. Um, let's kind of, oops, we're still using the same color. Okay, from here I'm going to duplicate my flats, make them a little bit darker, crank the saturation, do a little bit of a red shift, and from here, uh, subtract away from my flats, and I'll use, let's see, I'll use the sketch that we were initially drawing with. So this way I'll just get a little bit of detail in. Hmm, let's make it a little darker. Oops. Ooh, there's some sloppy stuff going on with our multiply, honestly. Let's go in and fix that. Stuff I don't like. Especially there. Almost there, guys. takes so little to kind of break the illusion here. And this is not a character who I was, you know, my plan is not to crazy over render them as much as possible. Never was. I can go super deep into this. If I wanted to, I'd really rather not. Okay, do a little bit of right there. Nice. And I don't like my idea of... There. Uh, let's see. Ugh, this looks so like early 2000s Photoshop rendered. Yikes. Alright, I took a brief break from this and my my thinking as far as how to salvage this, and by salvage I mean uh, out of respect for your guys' time, you've been patient so much so far to, to get to this point. Um, what I would normally do, or what I would kind of prefer to do, is go over this with a new, uh, a new bit of ink, right? A new, uh, yeah, a new ink layer. Um, only from the standpoint of like, it's just, it's too prominent, right? Um, so the next best thing is going to be to kind of reduce how noticeable it is with a little bit of colored line art, which is not necessarily the easiest uh, solution here. This is my one time to kind of get this right. There we go. But it's, it's at least a little bit faster than actually, you know, retracing all of our lines, essentially. Uh, so I'm gonna go over each of these areas with just kind of what contextually is a darker version of the 
color it's filled with. And you can kind of already start to see how that kind of brings us to a point where our shadows will make more sense. I'll, I'll then kind of duplicate these two layers and bring them, merge those, the duplicate, merge the duplicates, excuse me. And from there, ooh, that's not good. I can get away with the same color on these lighter feathers, just not the dark ones. So I'll go over the dark ones in a second here. So the dark ones could use, let's see, basically a, just a darker version, closer to black. So if, when I duplicate the two layers, I'll merge them, and then that will give us kind of every pixel that's currently on here will then be uh, on that layer and selectable. So you can already see like the lack of black, except for around the eye area, which is a little bit intentional. This is by all means a messy piece. I'm full on embracing that at this point. Um, but in order to get to kind of the next stage of just like texture, and I also hid the multiply layer just now because I just, I'd rather it looks good flat than uh, like I'm trying to compensate for something by adding a bunch of uh, rendering. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, this section here. This shouldn't take too long. It, I, I've done enough of this in the past. Uh, here's sort of an issue is where you, you get to a point where you've got a color value in the fill butting up against some line art that will be uh, not as deep a value. So like this, this here, I'm a little worried about. See this, where this red bumps up against the yellow. That's kind of why maybe I should have been taking it a little easier on some of my values within my fill. Um, should I, nah, see, I'd like to color that feather, but it would just blend in at that point. Okay. Fill our feathers there. See much, much mo more coherent at this point. Like still messy, but we're getting there. The black is not fighting us so much. We'll keep the black on the feathers. Um, this might have been a good place for us to keep each layer separate, line-wise. Um, but honestly, like, this is... This is one of those, you know, you think you're saving time things that comes back to bite you. Which I should have known. I've, I've gone through this enough times. And you always just want to make sure that, like, what color you give each of these is the actual... So you, you don't want to, just because a line touches the green doesn't mean that the, the shirt, right? The shirt shape is also green. You know, it's not enough to just border a color. You have to be defining the shapes still. Okay, uh, here we should really just be able to Select to this area. So, so messy. I, I implore you guys not to work this messy. Do that a little lighter. And man, I like the, the leg black, honestly. Let's see. Let's go gold. Uh, is this deeper than our gold down here? No, it's not. So let's go darker that's that should work and then on our blue sections just make sure to let's see uh, should we make it lighter in a few cases making a lighter no that's not quite it 
No, that's not it. Let's go with this guy. Let's see what this looks like. I mean, some of this would actually be good gray. So maybe I can come back in and add some gray accent. Uh, and, uh, this isn't dark enough. Like we're, we're just, we're coming a little bit out of the black. It, it all depends on sort of what your existing fill colors are, but there's not, you know, you're coming, this is pure black and this is where we're existing, right? We're not doing like, oh, this is pink line art. So we're almost there. Uh, let's see, let's go to our kind of darkest point on the arm. And actually this is our darkest point. Right there. And come down a bit from there. Super subtle difference. So now that we've colored our lines, I think this looks better. By just a bit, just enough at least. And then from here I can actually do some flat shading over top because it will now make sense for the lines to be lit. Does that make sense? Or to be shaded? Um, before when they're just sort of the the barriers, right? Uh, it doesn't make any sense to have any kind of lighting or shading that overlaps on top of the lines. But now that they're colored, you can, you can actually get away with it a bit more. Uh, we've got one sort of black spot here. And of course the head or the eye rather, we're going to keep uh, black just for the contrast. And is this green enough? Well, let's go with this. Okay. Much better. Let's come in and erase this stuff. We'll duplicate and duplicate. So now we have two flats here. We've got this so this is just everything right so if we go in here crank it down all of our you know as imperfect as it is this is every pixel you're not going to have uh places if you select this where things aren't as consistent so now i can go straight over top right uh and i don't want to do that but <laughs> but i could so, here's a green. I don't know why I chose this green. Where did it come from? But see, it can go straight over top of the, the arm like that. Uh, what I'd like to do instead of this sort of lightning stuff is I'd like to do uh, little bits of texture. So, with our sketch brush love to go in and maybe choose our line color. So texture in this case would be some snake skin, some more reptilian skin really. By no means my favorite character I've ever done, but hopefully it was a good enough, like, sort of learning experience, the walkthrough. Uh, what about here? Yeah. Find a little places to kind of clean up. The resolution of this character, too, is not as high as I typically go. Usually I'm stick around the 6400 range, depends, really. Um. Let's see. Love to come in here and get some uh, some rust. Some weathering on the paint. Do 
Just a little of this goes a long way. So you don't have to overdo it. Um, let's see, where's, what sort of metal? Yeah, there we go. Do some. Like the paint is kind of peeling off of here. Sometimes it makes sense to go over the line, sometimes it doesn't. We'll cut in so that it isn't. It's like little scuff marks there. Not bad. Um, and then I think we could do something kind of similar on the other end. Uh, we do kind of this gauche. Gauche. Let's see. Yeah, something like this would be good as long as we erase around the, uh, let's see, let's erase some of this. As long as you erase in this glowing area. Okay. Yeah, this is the kind of texturing stuff that really I'm fine with it being flat, if that's all we get out of this. And let's see. <laughs> Do we like this brush? I don't know. I mean, you can kind of get a cool like kind of brushed, brushed metal look if do that, do it the right way. Okay, let's see how this looks. Let's multiply. It's pretty much what we're going to get if we did. Uh... Hmm. Let's try a lighter one, actually. There's add. I like additive layers and just going really light on the on the opacity. Um, I think you know what I'm gonna go back into my ink here. This one is this one's bothering me. Let's go a little darker. It's because it's such a low uh, value and saturation. This shirt area that it's starting to look kind of out of place. I think I can go a little there. A little more saturated. What's that? Okay, so like a billion different mistakes, or not mistakes, but imperfections in this that are just, they're just messy. They're the result of not spending uh, the amount of time that you might typically on something. Um, I'd love to do a little bit more sort of stone texture to the, hmm. Oh, this is, this is nice. Let's come in here with the source splatter. Okay, that's our additive. Here we go. Really basic texturing. Just a little bit of noise, right? Texture is such an interesting thing, like how it, why it looks the way it does in what light. And we're gonna come down off of that opacity. Leave it right there, maybe, maybe multiply? No, normal's fine. Man, I just don't like this, this tail. I mean, better to just have a 
darker. Well, not like that. There we go. Better for that to be darker than to have a line art that's butting up against uh, something that's darker than it. Because that's just the worst. It's very hard to make that look good. Very few cases where that looks good. Okay. Nice, and I just want to kind of, let's see. Maybe I go very uh, broad colors now because I'm not too worried about specific shades and stuff, right? board on this and you can always t tone it down I uh, specifically want just kind of this a nice uh, cylindrical look to the the tail here so not only am I gonna bring this down a bit you know like to about there um, but I want to mess with some other hues like you know what kind of fits our guy Maybe right there, like that. Okay, we can do the same with some, look how many layers we have now. But this is like, you know, it's it's more slapdash. What's the opposite of pink? Yeah, let's go for kind of a green shadow. Very slapdash compared to sort of like a, an actual like shaded, cell shaded rendering, but boom. And finally, I'm going to duplicate this, bring it down to the bottom, turn it on, and cast a bit of a shadow. We're not gonna go super literal with it. Oh, is this locked? It's locked. Okay, we don't want a pure black shadow. Still an airbrush, perfect. Okay, and then opacity down. Okay, I wanna come back up here. I just wanna make sure that it's clear, like, let's see. I want our head to be not being hit by this light so much. Is that possible? Yeah, I just need a fuzzier, uh, let's go back to this shader. Okay, that's better. That's all I need, it doesn't need to be super clear. Get rid of the glow. Nice. Um, same thing with the arms. I'm worried they're not cylindrical enough. I think I'll go in and kind of, let's see, can I get a little bit more specific? Hang in there guys, we're almost done. So 
So our light source is coming from this side over there. We can come in with a dark green. So let's see. That looks pretty good. So casting a shadow over top of the one underneath. Uh, same over here, like let's shade this edge. Real quick. It's so close. Okay. And I will add this same shadow effect under here. Where we just know that we've got Helmet casting a shadow. And over here is too much. Uh, I'd love for this to sort of like, let me, this color here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just a tiny bit of light in these two areas. Yeah, it's a little bit tough because those are such flat areas now that everything else was so uh, very seamlessly and painlessly Okay, that's bad. That's not bad. Just enough of a gradient here is actually perfect. And we're kind of giving the texture of the of some dirtier clothes, I guess. That works for me. Uh, I think that's as far as I'm gonna go. Uh, if if I yeah, so here's that's how messy everything is underneath. Usually it looks a lot cleaner when I do that this kind of thing where it it almost doesn't matter if you've got the lines turned on. Okay, if I go just a little darker with those lines, which one is better? I honestly think right there. I think that's it. Cool. Um, not the greatest character I've ever made, but definitely a very fun one. And I like the idea that the prompts put forward. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you made it to this point, I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you to the patrons who helped uh, contribute the prompt ideas. If you're not already a patron, you can get a personalized video critique of your work over at patreon.com slash bagel denizen at the novice bard tier. And you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. And I should uh, be posting this guy on Instagram sometime soon. Thank you so much for watching and have fun creating.